Liz and Gregory and Zsa Zsa. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Daddy. What do you mean, Daddy? Who are you? Don't you recognize us? We're your children. <laughs> oh, no, you're not. My children are a little boy about 11, a little girl about 6. Now, what have you done with my children? Honest, we're us. I'm Linda. <laughs> my goodness, so you are. For a minute, I thought you were Zsa Zsa. Uh-huh. What's a jaja? What's a jaja? <laughs> ah, you're beautiful. Mm. What is this, Wes? What are you getting made up? What is this? Oh, here? she roped me into it. She roped you into it? Yeah. Why did you rope him into it? We're desperate out at the colony club, like Mommy. Oh? Louise? Yes, sir? Miss Williams go out to lunch today? Yes, sir. With some lady. That's after 4 o'clock and a long lunch, isn't it? Well, be a shame if she didn't take but one hour eating because it took two hours to get ready for it. <laughs> <coughs> Who'd she go out with, Princess Margaret? Well, we didn't get a chance to meet her because they were in a hurry. But we got a look at her while they were leaving. Huh? She sure was elegant. Yeah, she had on the latest style outfit. How would you know? Well, after all, I am a female. <laughs> You are? Yeah, didn't you know? <laughs> I knew. And I know you're going to get in trouble with your mommy if you don't take these things off this instant. Let's go. Come on. Yeah. Hello, beautiful. How was the lunch? Oh, go jump in the lake. What's oh. <laughs> nice. Honey? Just leave me alone, and I'll be all right in a few minutes. Holy smokes, what'd you have for lunch? Ground glass? <laughs> I had a wonderful, exciting, stimulating lunch. And now it's back home to the grind. What grind? The housewife grind. Please, just leave me alone for a while. Hey, do me a favor, will you? Will you go out and come back in and make another landing? I don't think my radar's picking you up at all. <laughs> do you know with whom I had lunch today? No, pray tell. With whom did you have lunch today? With whom? I had lunch with Arlene Colby, who was my roommate in college. Well, hip, hip, and a hemline. Why should that make flames spot out of your nostrils? Well, she only happens to be the editor of Silhouette Magazine, that's all. So? Do you know where she went after lunch? To the powder room? <laughs> Don't be uncool. She went to the Queen Mary to welcome some designers from Paris. And then she's taking them to the Ritz for cocktails and dinner at 21. And you know where I went after lunch? To the butcher shop and stand in line for 45 minutes to pick up my pot roast. <laughs> What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Yeah. Why, at school, I was the editor of the school paper and she was my assistant. I showed her how to make a layout. I taught her everything. And now she's gone on to be a famous, glamorous personality and... Me. Huh. Well, you've gone on to become famous too, kid. You're pretty glamorous. You're Mrs. Danny Williams. What's the matter with that? Got your name in the paper last week, didn't you? I did. In Earl Wilson's column, as big as life. Quote, also at the opening were Danny Williams and his spouse, unquote. <laughs> I, I almost forgot about that. And you know, I just love the way you spelled my name. By the way, if you see Earl Wilson again, would you please give him my credit, star of Putts? Pans and scouring oh, pans. Oh, come on. <laughs> Those aren't washed. I like dirty grapes. <laughs> now, you're not going to give me that old wife routine about how you're a slave to this house. I suppose I'm not. Oh, you women today kill me. You're slaves? Man, you got it made. It's a push-button era you're living in. Automatic washers, automatic dryers, automatic ovens, vacuum cleaners. All you do is push a few buttons and whoosh, zam, bang, and the job is done. If you ask me, on Mother's Day, we should send flowers to the electric company. <laughs> that's so. Yeah, that's so. My mother, your mother, the mothers of yesterday, they were the ones that worked hard. You know what my mother used to have to do? Walk down five flights of stairs to the basement and do the laundry by hand. Then walk up six flights to the roof to hang it out. She had no vacuum cleaner, just a broom, and it didn't move unless she did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 
Fish had no help at all. Did all the work herself. For 10 kids did the scrubbing, the washing, the ironing, the sewing, and the cooking. And not once, not once did we ever hear a word of complaint from her. And you know why? Sure, she was too pooped to talk. <laughs> Look, all I'm trying to say, Clancy, is that it's not so tough running a house today. That's all. You all you need is a little organization. You got Louise, she'd do everything for you if you'd let her. Jeepers. Running a house like this, anybody could do it. No hands. Anybody? Yeah, anybody. For instance, you. Yeah, yeah, I could do it. What's the big deal? After the kids are going off to school, what's so tough about it? Well, you know, I never thought of it like that. Maybe you're right. I know I'm right. Well, then, if you are right, why, uh, I could have loads of free time. Sure, honey. You could go to luncheons and, and, and matinees and, and stuff like that, bridge party. I could even take that job Arlene offered me. <laughs> what job? At Silhouette magazine. She offered me a job as her assistant. She thinks I'd be a great help to her. You turned her down, didn't you? Of course I did. Oh, don't scare her like that, will you? <laughs> that was when I had the silly notion that I was needed around here, but now that you've convinced me that I'm not, why, I see no reason at all why I shouldn't take the job. <laughs> well, you're going silly or something. There's a lot of reasons why you shouldn't take the job. You're needed around here. For what? Why, you just put it so beautifully simple. Wish, zip, bang, and everything's done. So from now on, you can run the house. Oh, now, Kathy, wait a minute. What's the matter? If you have any trouble at all, just call the electric company. <laughs> <laughs> I bought you violets for your fur And it was spring for a while, remember I bought you violets for your fur And it was April in that December You smiled at me so sweetly Since then one thought occurs That we fell in love completely I love my violets. And I love you. So glad you stayed up because I want to tell you how sorry I am about that silly argument. Well, that's why I stayed up. I wanted to tell you the same thing. Boy, did it bug me tonight. Oh, I couldn't think of a thing at the club. You should have seen me. I made an idiot of myself on oh. the floor. All of those people oh, watching me, I couldn't think God. of a gag or a joke or anything. Oh, I'm so sorry. We should never fight. It just doesn't look good on us mm -hmm. at all. I know it, darling, and I was so foolish of me, but I... Oh, I had a bad day, and then Arlene offered me that job, and a few mad moments I saw myself as queen of the business world. <laughs> well, you're queen of my world, honey. Mm. That's a much better world than that silly old business world. Mm. It's not for you anyway. Mm. You couldn't handle that. You'd just get clobbered. Oh, I know. Robert! <laughs> you, you know what I mean, honey. No, I don't. Look, sweetie.
sweetheart. What I'm trying to say is that the, the business world, it's like a jungle. It's dog-eat-dog. -dog. It was different when you were at college. That was kid stuff. You were wrote a little thing, all right. So it was nothing. But this is for real, honey. This is tough. You could get hurt. That's not for you, baby. You're a warm little kitten. You, you, you belong here where you can be cozy and protected. Why don't you put some catnip in my milk? <laughs> I'm just trying to say that you're not equipped, that's all. I'm as well equipped as any woman. You bet you are, and I'm glad you changed the subject. <laughs> Why, if Arlene didn't think I could hold an executive uh, position, she wouldn't have offered it to me. Okay, all right. Maybe you can. Maybe you can. Maybe I can. Boy, don't I ever say oh. the right thing around here. Oh, <laughs> boy, you know, this has been a very educational day. First, I, I find out that I'm a button-pushing puppet for the electric company, whose only other function in life is to be around when her husband feels inclined to pat her stupid little head. I, I didn't say Maybe that. I can handle it. I'll show you. Congratulations. Thanks to you, Arlene Colby just got herself a new executive assistant. Now, Kathy, you don't know what you're letting yourself in for. Is that so? When it comes to dog-eat-dog, dog, I can be as ferocious as anyone. Now, you cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> Flowers I brought her. I should have brought her a bone. <laughs> I'll finish this shopping list before I leave. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Kathy. If you have anything to discuss with me, would you please call my secretary and ask for an appointment? <laughs> <laughs> Looks to me like someone around here goofed. <laughs> Wonder who it was. Looks to me like someone around here better mind his own business or he's going to be in trouble. And you drink your milk here with your mother told you. Thanks, I don't want to eat. You're not going to eat anything, no, Mr. Williams? No, I have no appetite. Thank you, thank mm. you. One thing maybe you can do for me, you can tell me what makes you, what makes you women tick. <laughs> the same thing that makes a watch tick. You men just keep us wound up. <laughs> <laughs> How could she think of taking a job? How could she even consider taking a job? Doesn't she realize she's indispensable around here? From what I hear, you did a pretty good job of undispensing her. <laughs> now she's going out to prove that she can hold down an important job. Important job? Hmm? What's more important for a woman than to be a good wife and a good mother? That's the most important job in the world. The kids need her. I need her. This house needs her. Don't tell me. Tell her. <laughs> tell her. She not even talk to me. Well, there's some way I could show her. Okay, what do we have to do to pull you out of it? <laughs> I know I could depend on you. Now listen, Mabel. Oh, Daddy, this is awful. Well, I'm sorry. I'm just not used to doing it, I guess. Kathy, hmm. would you please button up my shirt? Button your shirt? Why, Rusty, you're a big boy. You can button your own shirt. I know, but it's not the same as when you button it. Oh, for goodness sake. I oh. want to be real neat today, because if I am, Maybe I can be class monitor. All right, darling. There you are. Here, this one. Oh, one. gee, Daddy. Look at that. I could never do that good a job of buttoning. Oh, <laughs> that's what I call buttoning. <laughs> Mommy. Mm -hmm. My shoes are unbuckled. Could you do them for me? Well, what is this? National Helpless Week? You've been buckling your own shoes since you were four years old. But I can't do them as good as a mommy. Nobody can. Mommies are the best bucklers. Oh, <laughs> Daddy, yes, when sir. is Mother's Day? Oh, sometime in May. Why do you ask, son? Well, gee, it's a shame we have to wait that long to show our appreciation toward our mother. I wish every day was Mother's Day. <laughs> gee, what a nice thing to say. Did you hear that, Kathy? Wasn't that sweet for a boy to say? I'm overwhelmed. Oh, oh, Kathy, before you go, dear, there's... You know how I value your opinion about my act, and don't you think I ought to get some uh, new, funny material? I mean... Well, if you need some new material, this routine you're doing right now is pretty funny. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. This phony act. 
Oh, I've never been so insulted in all my life. Obviously, you don't think I have a brain in my head. Well, I think you're Coaching the children to butter me up, to buckle their buckles I and button their buttons. Asking my opinion about your act when you don't need it. Why, it's humiliating. Well, well, jeepers, Kathy, we're just trying to show you how indispensable we think you are. Oh, sure. I'm so indispensable, you have to think of phony ways to prove it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm late for an appointment. Louise? Yes, ma'am? I'll leave the grocery list on the kitchen table. All right. And it's for the million <laughs> simply brilliant. Oh. They are, honestly. Now, you let me see those layouts that you were telling me about, huh? All right. Oh. Oh, I didn't expect you to be home. Well, I thought somebody ought to be here when the kids come home from school. Oh, um, Arlene, this is my husband, Danny. How do you do? How do you do? He's a big stockholder in the electric company. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, you've heard me speak of Arlene Colby. Yes, yes, I've heard you speak of her. You ought to be awfully proud of your wife, Mr. Williams. She has some very good ideas. She has a real feeling for fashion work. Does that mean she's been hired? Oh, my. She's one of the crew. We piped her over the side today. Oh, well. Pip, pip, and all that rot. <laughs> if I had a cannon, I'd fire a 21-gun salute. Well, if you'll excuse me, Arlene, I'll run upstairs and look for those layouts. Sure. Mommy, Mommy! Oh, honey. Mmm. Strawberry? No, raspberry. <laughs> Why don't you try to get some of that in here? Come here, I want you to meet a very dear friend of mine. Arlene, these are my children, Linda and Rusty. Well, how do you do? This is Miss Colby. How'd you do? Oh. Hi, Rusty. Better not shake. I'm sticky. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know Rusty was such a big boy. I bet you're quite an athlete, huh? Well, I guess you could call it that. I'm in the little league. Oh, wonderful. What are you, the halfback? Halfback? <laughs> well, that's football. The little league is baseball. Oh, boy. I guess I'm not up on my sports. <laughs> Kathy is. She knows all about baseball. Really? Yeah, she's the official scorekeeper for our team. Hmm. Well, you know how they drag the parents into these things. Oh. She comes to every game. And she comes to our bluebird meetings, too. Mommy's the leader. Oh, well, I guess you're pretty proud of Mommy, huh? Yes. Well, Mommy's pretty proud of her, too. But you know, she'd be more proud of her if she'd get some of that jam off of her face. And some of the bird's nest out of your hair. My Kathy, goodness. may I do it? Why, yes, of course, if you'd like. I'd love it. Come here, doll. Okay? Ah. Here we go. No. No? You're supposed to call in the front first, then the back. Oh, I beg your pardon. I've tried other hairdos, but this seems to be the best for me. <laughs> yes, I, uh, I think it is, too. Of course, I'm not very experienced in combing little girls' hair. Why? Don't you have to comb your little girl's hair? Oh, I, I don't have a little girl. Do you have a boy? No, I, I don't have a boy, either. Uh, you see, honey, I, I'm, I'm not married. I don't have a husband. Oh, that's too bad. They're so, they're so nice to have. Well, you see, darling, Miss Colby is very busy. She runs a fashion magazine. You mean all you do is work? <laughs> yes, I, I guess that does take up much of my time. Well, children, I think you better run on upstairs now. Uh, no, don't, don't, don't send them out on account of me. Well, they should be doing their homework, but if you'll stay to dinner, you'll see more than enough of them. Well, thanks, I'd love to. I want to hear more about the uh, little league and those bluebirds. <laughs> All right, and I'll be right down with those layouts. They're charming, children. Thank you, we think so. There's another one, isn't there? Terry. 
She's away at school. Oh. Well, Kathy told me about them, of course, but, you know, I'd never seen them. They were just names. You like kids, don't you? Very much. So? <laughs> so, why don't I have some of my own? It's none of my business, but if you like kids a lot, it's really quite simple. <laughs> All you gotta do is find the right guy, and if he's got three bucks for the license and double saw buck for the preacher, why, well, you're in business. Well, I, um, I found the right guy, and he had the, uh, three bucks for the license, the double saw buck for the preacher, but he didn't want to put out all that money for a part-time wife. He wanted me to give up my job. Imagine, I was making more money than he was. Twenty dollars more. Doesn't he still, uh... Oh. Now, there was another girl. A real featherweight. Didn't think having a career was important at all. Chucked the whole thing just to raise a family. Naive, isn't it? They had their third child last month. Well, you didn't exactly come up empty. You, you're a very successful woman. Oh, yes, yes. I, I have a thriving career and an assured future. As a matter of fact, I'll probably turn into a, a female Bernard Baruch. <laughs> you know, sitting on a park bench feeding the pigeons watching somebody else's kids. <clears throat> oh, uh, did you get the layout? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I, I forgot about them. Forgot? Well, uh, I'm sorry, but by the time I finished washing Linda's face and, and getting the knots out of her hair and found the short circuit in Rusty's electric train and... and really, Danny, can't you put your shirts away when they come back from the laundry? You know, I just have the most helpless family in the whole world and I... I I'm sorry. It's nothing to be sorry about. As a matter of fact, you saved me the trouble of firing you. Firing? Mm-hmm. You know something? Let me give you some advice. If you ever really want a job, don't you bring your prospective boss home to meet your family. I'll remember that. You do, though. I'll take a rain check on the dinner, okay? Sure. You know, the fashion world keeps flying, and I have to keep flying with it. So, goodbye, Danny. Try and catch your act some night, if I ever have a breather. You do that. Yeah. Goodbye, honey. Goodbye. You keep those bluebirds flying, you hear? Bye. Tell me the truth. You can't get that from the electric company. <laughs> My goodness, my pie. Now stand still or you'll stick yourself. Darling, darling, my chewing gum in my hair. Oh, darling, please, don't put your fingers in it. You'll but spread wow. it. Well, just a minute, honey, and Mommy will help you with it. Ooh. Oh, boy, pie! Oh, Linda! <laughs> what you made me do? Oh, my goodness. Hello, family. Oh, boy, what smells good? Oh, pie, isn't that good? Now, what a scene. Isn't this wonderful? Tell the truth, honey. Isn't this better than working, dear? Oh, sure! <laughs>